guest today helps women entrepreneurs and disruptive corporations find their brand voice. Her unique background in image consulting, leadership development, and transformational coaching, coupled with her futuristic thinking, sets her apart from other brand and business coaches. She uses her forward-looking focus to help her clients create compelling brands that inspire. She exudes the we-can-do-this attitude and helps her clients build the resiliency needed to become an amazing brand. Please welcome brand strategist and transformational coach, Mia Lamont. How are you? I'm doing well, Jillian. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk with you because there's, I have so many conversations with so many small business owners and they're like, well, am I a brand? Am I, am, is that really a thing? Do I need to worry about that? And I know that you probably have a lot to say about that. So let's kick it off with that. What's a sure. brand? What factors create a brand? Absolutely. So a brand, you are a brand. Most of us are brands, right? We are walking, talking um, billboards for our, for our businesses, really, especially if you own a small business and you're the face of the business. Even if you're not, the values and what the company is all about is still you, right? So it's really important for us to come from our values when we start our brands. And the components of a brand, I say, uh, as an image consultant, it is definitely the way that you appear. So how you look, but also how everything else that you have in your business looks, um, how you communicate, how you behave, also your digital presence. But the most, I think the most significant thing is your mindset. I'm glad you brought that well, up. That promises your brand. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that's super important because a lot of people you know, we start these businesses, but we don't really give a lot of thought to that mindset. So what do you think, like, what mindset, if there is one, should go with your brand? Oh, great question. So what I've discovered as I've gone through my own journey uh, as a business owner is that the mindset has to be that you can do whatever it is that you believe that you want right? That it can absolutely happen for you. And oftentimes, even myself, like, I'll be like, can I really do that? And what I've realized is that if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't something that was designed for me to do, I would never have the dream to do it. So staying in that mindset and staying in the, in the, in the, the throes of positivity. And I know it's hard sometimes, but staying in the throes of possibility possibility is going to help you way more than being in that space of, oh my God, I can't do this. This sucks. This is so hard. I don't have the money. I don't have the this. I don't have the that. I don't have the looks. I don't have, like we, we make up so many things about why we can't do what we want to do. And if we just flip that to how we can do it, we're so much more successful. What do you think are some other characteristics besides that positive mindset? Because that one is huge. But what are some other characteristics where you're like, this is so important to have this entrepreneurial mindset? Oh God, you got to have people around you that believe in you. I was in a relationship a really long time and this person did not know anything about business. And, you know, when I first quit my job, he's like, you got to be able to make whatever you were making at your job or you just can't do this. And even that little bit of negativity or that little bit of pressure could put a lot of pressure on me and my business, right? And so what I've learned is that being around people who understand what you do, being around people who support you, and then being around people who are like at other levels, like higher levels than you, so you can see what it is that you might not be seeing that they do see. Yeah, definitely important to have a group of people, a team of people around you that are there to support you and push you forward, right? Because everybody needs that. Everybody needs cheerleaders, right? Everybody needs cheerleaders. And, and I cannot stress enough how much business owners need coaches and not because I am a coach, but because I need a coach. And that's the thing, like we, it's, it's almost like having a personal physician with you as you go through your business, right? So they're gonna diagnose, they'll triage sometimes, sometimes we need triage, right? They'll triage, they'll diagnose, and then they'll, they'll help you with some of these problems that you're, you're just blind to. And then they will cheer you on and also believe in you. Like my coaches, you know, they would say things like, take our belief in you and use that. 
right? Absolutely. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody needs it, right? Especially when you're doing like all these hard things that most of us have never done before. And we're just like, we're going to figure it out. You know, you need somebody supportive to like push you forward. And I always say is we don't know what we don't know. And oh. so we can make mistakes. And so it's so important to have someone there saying, hey, I fell into this, you know, pothole before. I want to help make sure that you don't fall in there. So that way you don't waste time, money, et cetera, in that same mistake. So for coaches sure. worth their weight in gold for sure. Absolutely. I remember when uh, I first started with this one coach, we were to do this uh, video introduction. Yeah. It took me like five takes to do the video introduction. I was nervous. I changed clothes like three times. It was, it was ridiculous. It was a hot mess. And now I'm like getting on Facebook and, and doing lives. I have a, uh, I have a, my own Facebook group, but I, I'm starting this. Uh, my cousin's going to Cabo for her 50th birthday. And so I started a Facebook group for that. Right. And I'm, I'm doing videos every day in there. So, you know, it, you got to start where you are and remember that everybody was not good at the things that they do where they are right now. You can't compare somebody's 10 years to your first year. So important to know. And like you said, like even videos, I know people are terrified to do them. It's just one of those things where you're going to have some horror. Like I look back at my first YouTube videos and I'm like, girl, what were you thinking? Hey. But you have to start somewhere. Like you got to get out and do the thing because if you don't, you're never going to get better at it. Right? No. And you're never, and your business is never going to grow. Right. I was, um, uh, I went to see one of my friends when I was in Louisiana. I'm originally from Louisiana. And her husband was like, so how's that little business of yours going? And I was like, well, it's supporting me. He was like, that's good. He's like, I'm glad to hear that. Because when I, I first saw you flailing around online with it, and I was thinking, oh my God, how horrible is this to say to someone, number one. But then number two, like, thank God that I stuck with it. Thank God he didn't say something to me before. And I was like, do I really know what I'm doing? Right. That's so, what I was just yeah. thinking. I'm like, good thing you didn't say that to you before. And then you started to like internalize that and think, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm not like, I'm not good enough to do this. Oh exactly. Gosh, people are exactly. so. Yeah. It's horrible. Like people, and, and that's just it. Like people don't know how, they don't know how tough it is, especially to be an online entrepreneur, right? They don't know how tough it is because you have this, this vast world out there. You don't know who's looking at you, right? You don't know who's judging you. But one of the biggest things that I've learned and, you know, I've learned, I learned it a couple of years ago, but like I finally embody it is that what other people think about you is none of your business. Amen right? to that. <laughs> none of your business, whether they think you're amazing and whether they think you're, you're crap right? It, it doesn't matter. So you have to be so convicted in what it is that you're doing and what you're up to that nobody can shake you from it. Right. I agreed. Yeah, yep, totally. Well, and because your business is a little bit more established now, when you look at like how your brand has evolved, do you think that, you know, that brand evolution is growing with your business? How do you think that works together? Yeah, like I'm constantly growing. So why I'm constantly growing and evolving. Why would my brand? I'm talking to a marketing company right now. We're thinking about doing a doing a rebrand. And I was talking to one of my cousins. Look, I have a lot of family. I was talking to one of my cousins who is uh, she's a very successful business owner, and she owns a brick and mortar. So she's like, "Why are you rebranding? Didn't you just do that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I did." And like I get to do it again and again and again, as much as I grow and as much as, you know, like I said, I just ended a 16 year relationship last year. So my life has changed vastly and so has my brand. And I believe that as long as you are evolving, your brand should evolve too. And I'm not saying that you got to change your logo and do all that, but you should definitely be getting some fresh pictures, right? Some fresh photos of you. And also like, you're going to change your, the way that you see life is going to change. And that should, you should reflect that in your brand. And if there's a business out there that knows like, Hey, I need to update some stuff. Like when are the times that you think we should rebrand, get those new pictures, do all those things, like freshen up the look of everything. How often do you think we should do that? What's an example of like times that you'd be like, okay, now's the time to do it. 
Yeah, I'd say if you haven't updated your, your website or your pictures or anything in the last two to five years, you might want to consider it. Um, I like to do photo shoots quarterly uh, because of COVID, I haven't done that. Um, so we're getting, you know, the world is opening back up. So we're doing that. And you got to do what's in your budget. But here's the other thing. You can't let your budget stop you from doing the things that you need to do in order to grow. Agreed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to figure out a way to make it happen. Because Absolutely. If, again, it's like one of those things where if you're like, oh, I don't want to have my photos redone because of X, Y, and Z. Like, again, that's a mindset thing where you have to change it so that way you can move forward, get those updated things for your business. Because I really think like what you mentioned before, like our businesses are evolving like we are. Like you just have to keep that going because nobody wants to look at a website and be like, okay, the eighties called, they want their pink, their turquoise, <laughs> like come get it. You know, I mean the peaches, we all know. Okay. We all know if we are eighties babies, you know, that that's kind of the look back then. So you've got to make sure all your stuff is up to date and it doesn't have to be crazy expensive. You don't have to redo the whole thing, right? You could just do one aspect of it. What's, what's the best, like if you're, if somebody's on a budget and they're like, listen, I've only got enough money to do you know, one thing, what do you think that one thing is that would be the first thing on the list to update? Would it be the photos yeah. or would it be something else? I'm going to say, find out what colors look good on you first, right? That way, when you update this website, your website's going to be able to coordinate with the things that you should be wearing that are going to be complimentary to you. A lot of people, like you just said, a lot of people have these brand colors and when they wear them, it's like, oh, my God, like that is not the best color for you. And then I have, I have a client too. I was like, look, the, the client, the colors are really, really bright. And I was like, you don't have to do the literal version of this just because you're the owner. I was like, I would like to see you in more of a pastel because I think that's going to soften your look. So it just depends on the client, but the client needs to know like what looks good on them. Typically, if you do your hair color, your eye color, your skin color, those work for you, right? So this is this is huge. Those work for you and they make you look more approachable, right? Mm -hmm. So so start there. Start with some photos and start with looking at colors that, that look good on you and then use those, like see what the color psychology is about it and then use that in your branding. Now, one question that I ask all of my guests is yeah. what's one piece of advice that you would give to a small business owner? And it could be anything related to their brand. If they're struggling with something, they're overwhelmed by something, what's your one piece of advice? Work on your mindset daily. Work on your mindset daily and personal development. You said one thing, but this is, it, it goes together. Personal development is going to be the thing that brings you the success. It's not going to be the pretty website. It's not going to be the beautiful clothes. It's not going to be the great product. It's going to be how you see yourself and how you interact in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if people are struggling, they're, they're like, you know what? I know I need to do this, but I need some help. Where yeah. can they find you? Like where, what's the best way for them to connect with you? So that way you can assist them. So they can find me on Instagram. I am Mia Lamott Disruptor on Instagram. And uh, I also have a free Facebook group for women only right now. So sorry, guys. Uh, and it's the Disruptor Society, where we talk about all things branding, all things, all things personal development, and um, any kind of questions, like I'll do a free training uh, once a week. And then we can also answer questions in the Facebook group. I don't, I, I'd love to do that. Oh, that's great. Well, and yeah. I'll be sure to link all that in the show notes so people can find it quickly and jump into that Facebook group so they can chat more with about you. Thanks so absolutely. much for being here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Jillian, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So